All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get her fitted up with an e-collar here. So basically, the e-collar is a tool we're gonna use basically in the same fashion as how we're using this, but the benefit is it gives us the ability to communicate when she's on leash or off leash, obviously. So the process of introducing the e-collar is we essentially use it in conjunction with the leash and collar so that she starts to learn that this means the same thing as this, obviously. And then from there, as she shows reliability and like an understanding of it, there we go. Then we start using it just by itself. So I'm watching you move the hard collar yes. forward. It, should it be closer up to the like to the jaw yeah. than I had it? Uh, yeah, I mean, especially as we're adding another collar on just to get it out of the way, obviously. Okay. But yeah, technically your prong collar, you want as high on the neck as you can get it, like right behind yeah. the ears, because the higher on the neck, the more sensitive the neck right. is, so you can get away with using less pressure. Mm -hmm. And then the e-collar just goes right underneath it, and you'll see I kind of just offset this box on the neck like that. Okay. And so we'll you go don't over. Want it, like in the center. It's not that you can't have it there, like it'll work still. Uh, it's typically just more comfortable on the side here, and it's a little more flat on the neck, so it kind of sits a little bit nicer there. All right, and then obviously this strap you can cut a little shorter if you want to. I don't think she's going to be getting any bigger, so. Yeah, <laughs> gosh, I hope not. Yeah, right. So usually I'll put it on, and I kind of just grab that box, just kind of wiggle it through all the fur and stuff, try to get it as seated as possible. Good job. Okay. All righty, so first thing we need to do here <clears throat> is we need to figure out what her general working level is gonna be. So basically this is like the first level we could tell that she's feeling on the e-collar, but isn't like overly averse to or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at zero, go up, give a tap, go up, give a tap until I see some sort of sign that she's noticing it. So right there, that was, <laughs> that was literally a one. <laughs> and this goes, this goes out of 100, so we're gonna try that one more time here, see what we get. Now, a lot of times, if we do see it, like a one, literally, if you put this on you, you wouldn't even feel it. Right. Like, it's so yeah. low, right? I do with Tim's units. It's, ex it's yeah, almost so. exactly the same. It's a muscle stimulator, obviously, right? And a lot of times with dogs in particular, if they are that sensitive right off the rip, it has nothing to do with the actual sensation. It has to do with them being startled more yes. than anything, you know? So usually what we'll find is if a dog starts off really low, a lot of times they wind up working higher later as they start to understand what they're looking for right. you know right. so we'll just try that one more time here yeah so that time was a seven so you see yeah. how much of a different response obviously we got so we're gonna start at like a five that'll be a good good starting place here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pairing this pressure in just with her moving with me. So I'm gonna start walking around here and basically any time that I need to apply tension on that collar, I'm gonna be applying pressure on the e-collar at the same time. And this is gonna be back to, you remember when we introduced the prong, we were loose on the leash and I was kind of just going in the opposite direction of where she was trying to go. I'm gonna do that same thing here. Just when I give that pull, I'm gonna be giving a tap on the e-collar as well. So sort of associating the pressure Correct. from the collar with the electrical stimulus. Yes. Okay. We'll just kind of see what we get. And if she moves with me, no pressure, obviously. <laughs> she's the smartest mm -hmm. girl in the room. <laughs> yeah. There it is. So that, when she stops getting in the head moves, that, yeah. is that when you're... So if you want to watch, so applying, releasing. So same exact concept here. Applying, releasing. And at this point, because she is pretty focused in, really the only distraction we're gonna have is probably moving away from you. Applying, releasing. And we're actually gonna turn down even a little bit. We'll go down to a four here. And again, this is out of 100, so yeah. very low. Uh, Applying, so releasing. Keep in mind, tail wagging is not necessarily a sign of happy or this or that. Tail wagging is just arousal. So okay. it just means she's stimulated. So, you know, it's normal that early on, especially as we're introducing new tools, there's a little bit of stress associated with that. So, applying, releasing. So, can I ask a technical question? Yeah, for sure. So, um, 
in nice. humans psychologically when they get a lot of arousal, yep. you get emotionally flooded and it's harder for your rational brain to function. Sure. Do dogs have a similar thing? It almost looks opposite. Like when they get that arousal, they get more focused. It depends, you know, it depends. It just depends on how well they're able to channel it, right? So, you know, there are some dogs that, yeah, when they're really stimulated, like you just got to break through that stimulation first before any learning really takes place, you know? Uh, like, and also you got to look at what are they actually learning in that moment, okay. right? So if a dog was really, really stimulated or really, really aroused, and I was trying to teach them something very complex, like a retrieve or whatever, changing uh, some sort of really precise position or something yeah. like that, that would be just a shit show, right? No matter how much motivation I have in that moment, if they're that aroused, they're not gonna be able to make the minor adjustments really that they fine. need to be able to make, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But in the case of this, where we're simply teaching, moving in a certain direction or another, which is a very kind of loose general thing that's mm -hmm. fairly simple for them to be successful with, whether they're really aroused or really chill, it's gonna be much more easy for them to kind of comply with, right? <clears throat> Which is why a lot of times, you know, if we get a dog with like really serious behavioral issues or really bad reactivity, like sometimes it's just like we just have to stop this reactivity first yeah. and create, you know, some sort of boundary or consequence for that so that we could start training the dog. Yes. You know? Yeah. No, that's what I was thinking. <clears throat> and achieve engagement in some way, shape, or form, right? Good. There we go. And what we should start to see here is that as I'm doing this, one, she starts avoiding the pressure, and two, that if I do need to use the e-collar, she responds much quicker to it as she understands what to do, you know? Is that understanding kind of framed as not so much I know she knows what you want, she knows that what she's doing isn't what you want. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. A combination of the two, frankly, right, right. right? As she does it successful and realizes, wow, there's no consequence for that, right? That starts to shape what we do want, yeah, yeah. right? <clears throat> so it's kind of and then as she stops making the mistake of resisting that pressure, that's also teaching what not to do, mm -hmm. right? So technically, again, getting into the science of what we're doing right now, we're using negative reinforcement, right? right? Mm -hmm. Meaning the release of pressure, so right there, is technically perceived by the dog as a reward, right? Right. Okay. You know, we look at that weird because it's like it's an aversive, right? Sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but it still elicits technically a positive association with whatever they're doing in that moment, yeah. right? And then while they're feeling the stimulation, it's also communicating what not to do. Yes, okay. Yeah, that, I think that's where yeah. I was, uh, as I was trying to mm -hmm. kind of put it in its bucket, yeah. what I was missing is that the, yes. the, yeah. when you cease the negative yeah. input, that's positive, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And that's where a lot of people kind of get it confused. They look at just any sort of aversive use as negative reinforcement, which is not the case, right? You're creating a situation that allows you to be rewarded by yeah. removing that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't have to be something you add, like food, it can be something you take away. Correct, right? And listen, like in a perfect world, we would want to use food along, along the process, but like when you deal with some dogs, like right now she's pretty stressed out, she's in a little bit more heightened of a state of mind, she's probably not gonna be motivated enough by the food where it will be clear enough to her, right. Right? right? Where this is gonna be much more clear for her to perceive. Mm -hmm. Getting back to like you were saying, like when you right. start getting flooded and your arousal levels up, right? Different types of motivation will help her channel it in more effectively than others. Well, I'm just trying to translate it clearly, right? Because yep. that's what I want. Uh, I read the Don't Shoot the Dog, the lady that... Karen Pryor's book, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Dolphins and chickens. And it, it's yeah, just yeah. like the science of it is interesting yeah. to me. And But then applying it yeah. is, is seeing it in application yeah. kind of makes all of that. Well, you know what's interesting is, is that's actually, it is a really good book, right? So I've read it as well. Um, but Karen Pryor is a positive, like she's very yeah. against the use of aversive tools and stuff like that. So it's very good from the standpoint of understanding some of the whys behind motivating dogs yeah. and behind shaping behaviors. And, you know, frankly, when that book came out, she was kind of in a, in a place where the other side of training was a much more like kind of barbaric yeah. method. You know what I mean? There wasn't as much attention to detail and attention to the specifics as there is now, you know? Um, 
but now you could factor in, obviously there's a whole other side of yes. things you could add in in addition to that. Well, and it's, I mean, it's complex. Like I, sure. even reading it, that it was interesting in how she used it, but yeah. things are, I grew up on a farm, like it's yeah. more complicated if the reality is. Yes. And so. Real life always gets in the way. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Hard to write a book about yes. how, how it is for <clears throat> It's like a lot of the arguments you'll hear against the use of aversives, like the studies are all on like zoo animals or dogs in captivity and stuff like that, where every single bit of their life is controlled. The environment is 100% dictated by that person. Well, real life doesn't work that yeah. way, right? right? When I go for a walk with my dog, I don't have control of everything going yeah. on around me, yeah. right? <laughs> Laboratory yes. Right. Like, well, and that's the downside of trying to study in academia. Yeah. Again, yeah, I'm not saying it doesn't work, right? Like, clearly, like it's very effective in those types of settings, yeah. right? Uh, and it does work under the right circumstances. She's starting to do pretty well with this now. Yeah. So what I'm looking for here at this point is just that I can go longer and longer stretches without needing to use the e collar, obviously. Very good. do only positive reinforcement, it limits your options and you have to be so attentive. Uh, 100%. It's, it's contingent on you micromanaging the yeah, dog. I, I, I don't know very many humans who can actually do that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, there's not very many trainers that could do it <laughs> yeah. that effectively. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. <clears throat> and and I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I need that extra. I feel that way about parenting too. Yeah. Probably a lot of that goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're, you're correct. That's for sure. She's doing really great with this right now. She's picking it up well. She's been, we've been at the farm with my folks and mm -hmm. they are talking about one of my sisters is getting a Rhodesia Ridge back without oh, yeah. a bitch. And there's two puppies in the litter and she's like, don't you guys want the other one? <laughs> like, so they're thinking about getting it? They're thinking about a puppy, which is a terrible idea. Yeah. Right? Because she's been around and I was like, sure. like she's not, you don't walk into one like this mm -hmm. often and it's certainly not with a, with a puppy. Yeah. And I'm just, uh, but yeah, her, her, <laughs> she's smart and she's polite and yeah. you know, all. Now you'll start to see as you're doing this that, you know, right now she's doing well. She's maintaining attention. She's turning when you turn, you know, but she's a little, you know, a little loose kind of, right? And she's meeting the current expectations we have. But as she does well, you could start to tighten that boundary up a little more and like expect a little bit more tightness with it, you know? So when she wanders off, give a correction. Yeah, yeah. So for example, like if it looks like she's a little ahead, sometimes what I'll do is I'll make a quick turn and instead of giving her like two seconds to turn with me, I'll give her like half a second to turn with me and give the correction faster if she doesn't. I got you. And again, you don't have to worry about that really right now, no, but, but over the next week, you know, as you're working with her, you could start to tighten that boundary up a little bit more. So, um, I guess where's the ideal? Um, I mean, like right where she's at right now, honestly, is, is good, okay. right? Some of the ones where you were walking straight, she was kind of like a full body yeah, length yeah. ahead of you and stuff, you know? Yeah, she, she was real careful to not get yeah. the way I <laughs> but yeah, so I was curious. Yep, sure. Where the, where the limit at. Yeah, like this actually looks better right now, I yeah. would say. Yeah, kind of like that. Just make sure though, like right there, I saw you gave the tap. When you give that tap, try to turn so she could redirect back onto you. There you go, yeah, just like that. Perfect, yeah, it looks really good. Awesome. Like the funny 
things on it. Yeah. Awesome. Looks pretty good.